What does it mean that all our desires and all our wants are taken care of? I don't know what I'm going to want. There is no base level for my desires and wants. What does it mean when people say all their needs are taken care of? What are your needs? I, I, I need more stuff every year. I need different things in a year. I need to discover the things that I want and the things that I need. I, I don't settle. The robot are making food of X quality. I want X plus one. I can't remember, but isn't it true that in Star Trek, some people had like space yachts, private space yachts? Why not? Can everybody get one? Is it truly costless? Is the raw material costless? Is the electricity costless? But there's no end to human desires, human wants, human needs. There's no end to the potential of progress to supply those. But where does the progress come from? If not from somebody's mind, somebody coming up with an idea of a new type of soap with a new kind of scent, I don't know, new kind of food. So we don't just desire to have the standard of living that we have, the quality of life that we have. We don't just, I mean, this fully automated luxury communism is, is set in, you know, everybody would go on vacation at the lake and everybody would do, but what if somebody wants to go to Mars? How are they going to go to Mars? Well, somebody's going to have to make massive investments in going to Mars. How? Who? What's the incentive? How are they going to get engineers to come and work on their project rather than other projects? So the whole conception here is that values are static, that values are given, and that values are known from the top down. There is an authoritarian, a robot, a computer that knows what you need, what you want, what you desire, what your values are, and it provides them to you. But what if my values change? And to what extent are my values as meaningful if no effort is required to attain them? They just poof, show up. What about the value of work? The value of work not only because it can be enjoyable, but because it's a challenge, because that's where we get our self-esteem. Now, theoretically, you could take your hobby into that, but how do you know you're any good isn't the price system, another way in telling you, you are successful, you are good at what you do, you are producing values, real values to other people. So <coughs> it's a, it, it rejects where values come from, from your mind, your, your choices, your life, It rejects the idea that values are, are constantly changing, growing, becoming more ambitious. And it rejects the whole way in which production happens, which is somebody has an idea and has to muster the resources to make that idea reality. Robots don't have ideas unless they become human. And then they're human, not robots. So they're conscious, not robots. So yes. I think we will achieve a day where all of our basic material needs, all of our um, manual labor will be achieved easily, cheaply, do cheaply by robots. Think about this. I think I did, did this exercise before, but imagine um, we could grow the economy at 5% a year for the next 40 years. 
And imagine you earn, I don't know, let's say um, uh, $10 an hour today. So you're at the bottom, right? You're, you're, you're struggling. $10 an hour. And assume, which I think is justifiable to assume, that your wages are tied to the growth rate in our economy. Then at $10 an hour in 40 years, you would earn in real terms, assume the 5% growth is real, you would earn 72, I think, dollars an hour. $10 turns into $72 an hour. Now with $72 an hour, you can live pretty well. $72 an hour is a pretty good wage. And we're talking about the poorest people in our society making 72 bucks an hour in real terms. If that happens, there is no poverty. If that happens, everybody gets their basic needs taken care of, more than their basic needs. More than their basic needs. But of course, the only way that can happen is if we embrace capitalism. The only way that can happen is if we keep money, if we price things, if we use the price system, if we have free markets. Then we get to the point where there are no poor people by any standard. And when we, middle class, are all millionaires, very young, and can do whatever we want, including working less, if that's what we want to do. So it's very quickly, you can see that the real solution to attaining this kind of lifestyle where you work a little and you play a lot, if that's what you want, is to embrace capitalism. It's the only way. Because indeed, if you take all the wealth in the world today and you divide it among all the people on planet Earth today, it doesn't raise the standard of living that much for very long. And you take away the incentive to create much more wealth. Communism only leads in one direction. Communism only leads to more poverty. Communism only leads to more destruction. Communism only leads, even if it's utopian, even if it has no dictator, even if it's, but it has to have a dictator. Somebody has to put those evil capitalists in jail. It only leads to death, destruction, and starvation. It does not lead to luxury. Luxury is a feature of, only a feature of capitalism. There is no such thing as luxury communism. Luxury communism is completely, unequivocally, a contradiction in terms. Communism cannot produce luxury. It will never produce luxury. The robots will break down Nobody will be available to fix them. Nobody will know how to fix them. Nobody would have studied how to fix them. Everybody will be a, doing their thing. And civilization will collapse. Wealth will collapse until they rediscover capitalism. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. All right. All right. So um, one more point I want to make about this, just to link it to something I've told you about many, many times. This idea really comes out of uh, Judaism and, and Christianity. This really is the idea of the Garden of Eden. It's the Garden of Eden mythology. It's the Garden of Eden that has conditioned people to think in this way, or the Garden of Eden is a projection of people's desires. The desire to get the unearned. The desire to live a life without effort. The desire to just be at the beach, do whatever your whims desire, 
without the need to produce the things that are required for your life. In the Garden of Eden, all food is, produ- is just there. No effort, no work is required. No struggle. The Garden of Eden requires nothing of man. Indeed, the Garden of Eden is man as animal is man with no reason, is man with no will, is man with no choices. What everybody wants is to reverse the fall of Adam and Eve, to return, what what these guys want, not everybody, to return to some garden, mythological garden of Eden, Eden, where they don't need to use their mind. In other words, they don't need to be human. What they want to do is become animals. What they want to do is become beasts of the land with no free will, no choice, no effort, no work, numb, dead. And of course, in the Garden of Eden, you live forever. Boring as life might be. And this is a a pervasive mythology um, and super destructive. Of course, it's not just the Garden of Eden. It's, of course, paradise. It's, of course, where you go when you die, if you're good. It's a world with no work. It's a world with no money. It's a world with no effort. It's a world where you sit around doing what? Nothing. It's a world where you return to being an animal. And it seems like Christianity hit a home run with taking the Garden of Eden and projecting it into the future, projecting into the afterlife. Uh, It's very appealing in Christian mythology. It's very appealing uh, to people. And it's you see it circled back. You see it recycled, if you will, by the communists. What is a fully automated luxury communism? If not, Garden of Eden or paradise. But a false Garden of Eden and a false paradise. Remember that Eve has to bite from the apple of knowledge. The apple of knowledge is what gives Adam and Eve human consciousness. The apple of knowledge gives Adam and Eve reason, free will, choices. It makes them human. And that is viewed as a fall. That is viewed as a bad thing. That is viewed as something we need to overcome with communism. <sighs> All right. Um, so yeah, it's 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 also, you know, something that it's again to link this to kind of a a, a floating, platonic, wishful thinking. People imagine a world that's completely unrealistic and unattainable. It it goes back to those platonic roots that we've talked about over and over again during these episodes. Our job, the way to combat this, is to recognize that life is amazing, that life is not a burden, as uh, Jordan Peterson would tell us, but life is amazing, particularly in a modern world. Embrace your will, embrace your reason, embrace your work, embrace your life, live. The antidote to luxury communism is to say, no, I want to work, I want to produce, and I want to trade with my fellow man. I want better, better and better and better all the time. My wants are not constrained. They're not limited. (sighs) 
We need a positive vision of the fall. Becoming human makes happiness possible, makes self-esteem possible, makes success possible, makes interesting, stimulating, challenging stuff possible, makes pleasure possible. We'll talk about pleasure tomorrow in the Iran Rules for Life. So we'll do that uh, tomorrow. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.